Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and I am pleased to be introducing a brand new product from Intel. This is the Intel 335 series SSD. It's currently available in the 240 gigabyte capacity, which I have right here. Some quick specs from the box to start us off. This is a 2.5 inch drive suitable for desktop and mobile systems. You get a three year warranty from Intel. And this is also a SATA 6 gigabit per second SSD. That's SATA revision 3. It's of course also backwards compatible with SATA revision 2, 3 gigabit per second. And the biggest difference from this SSD to its predecessor, the Intel 330 series, is some nice updates they've done with the firmware on the drive as well as the move from 25 nanometer NAND flash memory to 20 nanometer NAND flash memory. Intel actually provided me with two of these drives, so I'm going to be testing them, or actually have already tested them in single drive and as well as in RAID mode. There's the drive itself. I quickly want to show you guys what comes inside the retail box. This is a uh, desktop installation kit, so you get a Intel SSD, a little information guide right there. You get your warranty and installation guide as well in a digital format on a little mini DVD. Uh, you also get some installation screws right there, and they've given you a very sturdy bracket, which you pop out from the bottom like so, uh, which is simply a 3.5 inch to 2.5 inch bay adapter. Now Intel is sticking with the fairly minimalist design of the 330 series here for the housing, but it is 9.5 millimeters thick. You do get standard drive mounting points on the bottom as well as on the sides for 2.5 inch drives, and then of course here at the back you have your serial ATA power and data connectors. I'm going to do a quick disassembly of this drive just to show you some of the components inside because when you're talking about 20 nanometer NAND flash, well, we might as well show it. Bear in mind that uh, it's typically best to not disassemble your SSDs at home, but they are pretty sturdy. And here inside we can see the PCB and we can also see these NAND flash packages. So this is your 20 nanometer Intel NAND uh, designed and implemented by them and uh, you have a total of 16 packages, 8 on either side, gives you a total uh, unformatted capacity of 256 gigabytes. So the difference there between the 240 on the box and the 256 here is the extra space is used for over provisioning, uh, wear leveling, as well as caching by the drive controller. The drive controller is located right there. It's a Sandforce SF2281. Intel's already been working with this controller and they've done a lot of updates to the firmware uh, to do a lot of improvements. Uh, what I noticed most specifically in the testing I was doing is a lot of improvements to the write speeds, uh, which is a really big upgrade. Uh, now, another thing I wanted to point out about Intel SSDs in general, because I have had the privilege of working with several of them over time, starting with the G2. I've also worked, worked with the uh, 510 and the 520. And Intel SSDs, in my experience, have a really, really good reliability rate. Uh, the failure rate is really low. I've received lots of really positive feedback about the Intel SSDs. So that is one b huge benefit that you get by going with Intel, is that you're going to get that uh, performance over time, and you're not going to have to worry about the drive failing. Moving on next to some benchmarks on this drive, and I'm um, just taking a look at our system configuration. Here's our SSD, it's all set up, and uh, we're running on an Intel Core i7-3960X CPU. We got the uh, Asus Sabertooth X79 motherboard, and our memory is currently running around along at 1600 speed. So uh, bear in mind, we are plugging directly into the SATA Rev3 6 gigabit per second controller that's part of the X79 chipset. So our first benchmark here is Atto, and this is being run at Q depth of 10. On the left side here, you have our single drive benchmarks. On the right side is the two drives set up in RAID 0. Now bear in mind, as you're looking at this chart, one on the left here goes up to 1,000, and one on the right here goes up to 2,000. So right here, with our RAID tests, we're actually hitting well over 1 gigabyte per second, actually about uh, 1.03, 1 about 1.07 we're getting max on the writes, about 1.03. We're getting max on the reads. That just shows how uh, RAID scaling goes when you're using SSDs to do the really fast uh, seek and access times. Actually, can't even call them seek times. Really fast access times, so you get really good RAID scaling performance. But here on the left side, we can see numbers that actually go well beyond Intel specifications uh, for what they're claiming the drive can do. On uh, writes here in our maximum tests uh, for the total transfer size, we're hitting upwards of 540 megabytes per second. On the reads here, we're actually, we actually hit upwards of 550 megabytes per second. So just as a quick point of reference here, here's the Intel spec sheet that they gave me. So Intel's claiming reads of up to 42,000 input-output operations per second, writes of up to 52,000 input-output operations per second, sustained sequential reads of 500 megabytes per second, and sustained sequential writes 
up to 450 megabytes per second. So we can see here, depending on the test we're running, of course, this is a synthetic test, so bear that in mind, uh, but we can actually go beyond the specs that Intel has listed for this drive. Next up, we're taking a look at AS SSD, and uh, we have the single drive test here on the left, the RAID 0 test here on the right, uh, and uh, AS SSD gives you an overall score, so the overall score here was 642 for this drive. And again, just pointing out the RAID scaling, we actually got more than double the score when we set up the drives in RAID 0. So again, just another testament to the RAID performance. Bear in mind, with RAID 0, you are going to want to have your data backed up just as a fail-safe because you are running two drives. Uh, but here, for input-output operations per second, uh, we hit over 50,000 uh, on the reads. And then uh, over here, when we actually set it up in RAID, we hit 114,000 on the 64K, uh, I'm sorry, the 4K 64 thread test. Uh, we hit 121,000 on the writes, on the writes for 4K 64 thread test. Here's the AS SSD compression benchmark test. And again, we have single drive on the left, uh, the two drives in RAID 0 on the right. Bear in mind again that the scales here have been uh, changed based on the drive's performance. So this one's actually peaking at 100. 1,035 megabytes per second, 493 megabytes per second there. The green is your read, the red is your write. So as you can see, as compression, or the amount of compression available increases, your performance increases. Uh, so over here, we actually peaked at a little over 490 megabytes per second uh, for the writing test. Reads uh, generally stayed pretty steady across the board, right around the 460, 470 megabytes per second uh, Mark here, we started off at about 620, and again, we scaled all the way up to about 950 megabytes per second on the writes, and again, read staying steady across the board here at well over one gigabyte per second. And finally, here is Crystal Disk Mark, and uh, I ran two tests here. Right now, we're just looking at the single drive tests for both, uh, for, for both sides here. Um, where we're looking at incompressible data on the right side, that's the default mode for Crystal Disk Mark, and on the left side is compressible data. So there you can see a bit of the difference, some of the uh, uh, performance boosts that you get when you're working with compressible data because the controller does do that compression on the fly. Uh, but here I wanted to come back to the spec sheet that Intel gave, and I, I, I applaud them for being somewhat conservative in their performance numbers here that they're showing. Reads up to 42,000 input operations per second, writes up to 52,000 input out output operations per second. And if you look down here at the uh, actual IOPS listed on the bottom, well, you can see random right here, we actually, we actually went past 90,000 input output op operations per second. We had 58,000 on the reads. Uh, very similar results, not quite as good as the compressible data test, but over here on the incompressible, we hit 68,000 and 51,000 respectively on random writes and random reads. Again, that's at QDAP32, which is a little bit out of the range of what you'd typically be doing with a desktop. With desktop usage, you're gonna be doing a lot more uh, actually 4K to 8K reads and writes and you're probably going to be working at more like a Q depth of one to three uh, for typical desktop use. But even there, you're hitting 35,000 here on the right side, and as well as on the left side, uh, whether you're using incompressible or compressible data. So based on my testing, I can definitely say that the Intel 335 series is a strong performer in all categories, whether you're looking at the higher throughput tests of the sequential reads and writes, or if you're looking at the 4K tests that make such a huge difference in day-to-day -day computing. Also, if you go with Intel, of course, you have their long-term reliability, as they've been in the SSD game for quite a while now. That's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time on Newegg TV.